Alright guys, so today I'm going to teach you how to get custom sounds working on your maps. So I added these barrels here, and you can see that as I get closer, radiation sound like get out of there. As I get further away, the sound decreases, it changes actually. Hope you can hear that. And there's nothing here. So I'm going to teach you how to do this. Basically, you want to get your sounds. So in my case, I went to freesound.com and select the, I mean, I downloaded Geyser Sounds. You have thousands of free sounds on this website. And the next thing you want to do is you want to, in my case, for example, because I want to use different sounds, like there's a sound for when I'm further away, you know, like little ticking, a second sound as I get closer third sound and finally the final sound when I am almost touching the, the barrels so I'm using four different sounds so after you download your sound you're gonna split it into four different files let me open up file explorer and you're gonna go to your add-on in my case Mars and place the four sounds in here Geyser 1, 2, 3, and 4 basically. This is 1, only 5 six seconds, 2, and 4. Okay, the problem with these sounds is that they are not going to be looping, and that is quite problematic because what will happen is you're going to be able to hear sounds only one time. For this reason, you're going to download Wabosaurus. Basically, this is a program that when you open it up, you're going to drag and drop your WAV files like this. Make sure it's minimized, not maximized. And you're going to press Control A to select everything and press L to create loop start, loop end. If you want a different part of the file to loop, you should select that one and press L. This is how the loop is changing. So in my case, I want the entire sound to loop. So make sure to do it like this and then you close it and make sure to hit yes. In my case, I'm not going to do it because I've already done it. And you're going to repeat the process with every single one of the sounds that you got. Press Ctrl A and L to loop that particular sound or area. Okay, so close it. Select Save Modifications, yeah. Do that with every single one of those audio files. Okay, after you've done that, you're going to go back into your add-on, sound events, and you're going to modify this text document. So. Let me delete the changes that I made so that I can show you exactly how it's done. So this is how it looks by default. You're going to come up here to the top and you're going to read the description of different sounds. So you want to read these and select which one adjusts better to your needs. In my case, I want to use this one. Why? Because it's loop a 3D sound at one point in the world. This is what I need. I want the sounds to be played specifically. I want to, uh, the location that I'm choosing. So I decided that I was going to use looping at XYZ base. And if you scroll down, you will have examples soundscape parent, looping stereo base, intermittent, all of this. And I just select the one that I'm looking for, which is AMD looping at XYZ. So copy this, go to the very top, and you're going to paste it in here. You're going to rename it to the name of your add-on, Mars, and the name you want to give that sound, so Geiger1. And in here, sounds, and the name of your sound, of the sound file. So it's geiger.wav, okay, within my sound folder. There it is. But it's VSND because this is what uh, Hammer is going to convert it to. So volume, I wanted to play at the highest volume, all right? And you see this value, so this is at zero distance, maximum volume. At 500 units, maximum volume. This is wrong, and I think some other mappers from the community explained this to me. Basically, you want it to be that at 500 units, it's zero volume. Because otherwise, it will be infinite sound. So let me clarify that. At zero distance, you want to hear this sound at the maximum volume, 1.0. At 500 units of distance from the source of the sound, you want the volume to be zero. So in that case, the volume decreases. 
I don't know why it comes with value one by default, but here it should be zero. So just save this. And as you launch Hammer next time, in your asset browser, if you write the name of your sound, sorry, Geiger in this case, you should be able to hear it. If you're not able to hear it, it means that the sound was not properly compiled. So probably when you were editing with Wabosaurus or with whichever sound exporter, um, something went wrong. But you should be able to hear it, you know, with your favorite sound player. Okay, and so you should have to fix your sound. But then anyway, after that, you're going to type soundscape sound events, sorry, sound events slash sound. And so you see our add on right here. So you're going to select it and recompile full. Okay. So when you open up your map, let me delete all of this so I can explain to you how it was done. You're going to add two entities. Of course, I want the sound to be coming from the barrels. So I'm going to add an MB soundscape in here and just name it Geyser one soundscape just for reference and leave the details all the settings uh, by default the sounds not going to be a projector from here basically and so you want to add an snd mb event points sound entity select your sound in here in this case mars geiger one so type geiger and if you don't see the sounds in here in my case i can see it right here but if you don't see the sounds you gotta go to the notepad probably you didn't save it and after that go to the asset browser and within your add-on recompile that file you can reload it and recompile it if necessary so after that you should be able to select your sound so sound event name geyser one okay so there is now you can't hear the sound because it's a sound is going to be looping so you cannot hear, but you just select it. Okay, no sounds coming out. Don't worry about that. Then source entity name. This is the sound of the soundscape and make sure to tick start on spawn. So basically, how is this going to be? This entity contains the sound. Okay, and it's going to redirect it to this other entity. So you have the emitter, the soundscape here and the source of the sound. Hope that makes sense. So you're not going to have the sound come out of this MB soundscape because in that case, at least for me, it's been very problematic to control the radius. See, forget about the, this value that says radius, forget about that. Um, we're going to control how the sound sounds and how further away it can be heard to this SND event point. And basically, if you refer to developervalvesoftware.com, you will see that they recommend to add an SND event point entity. This is the way that is recommended to actually do it. So, yes. After this, you can compile your map. Okay. Let's go. All right, so let's test this out. Forward. Can you hear that sound? It's very dim, but I sure can hear it. So the good thing is, um, you can go into the sound events uh, text file and you can edit it live. So I want to increase the volume. Let me 10. Save. Now you can hear it louder. Maybe 100. Yes, it's even louder, right? Now you can hear it. Okay. So let me take a step back. The sound is being heard from here. And as I get out of the radius, I can no longer hear it. Great. So maximum distance, 500 units. So if I increase this to 1000, look what happens. It can be heard even from here. So this is too much. So I want this to be like just 400 units. Okay, 
So from here it's been heard, great. Now, the next thing that I want is that as I get even closer, say at 300 units, I want to be hearing the other sound. In this case, Geiger 2. So select these two entities, shift and duplicate those. And so we're going to call in this time Geiger 2 soundscape and rename this other one, of course, to Geiger 2. And the same thing, duplicate now Geiger 3 and got call Geyser 3, great, there we go, and duplicate once again, and now Geyser 4. Okay, I now need to go back to the text document, and I'm going to copy this Geyser 1 to create Geyser 2, 3, and 4. So 4, 4, Geyser 3, 3, and two. Okay, and save this. Let me go back to the asset browser. Let me reload and recompile. Okay, so now we have to type in here Geiger to see if the sounds were actually compiled. Yes, I can hear those. So having done that, I'm now gonna compile the map. Okay, so the problem is that the sounds are overlapping each other, see? So, in the text file, I want to make sure that this sound, Geiger 1, is heard at 400 units, the next one at 300, then at 200, and the closest one, you know, like almost when you're on top of the object, at 100 units. So just save it, and now let's take a look. Very dim Geiger sound. Now getting louder, it's a different sound. Okay, buddy, better get out of there. Okay. And so again, I can change the volume. If, for example, I think that one of these is sounding like too loud, maybe. And for this one, Geiger 4, I think it's too, too loud. So let me set this to 20, rather. Yes. Yeah. And this one to 200. So this is louder now. Second sound. Third sound. Fourth sound. Third. Fourth. Second sound. And the first sound. Great. So yeah. And the sound is located specifically over there no matter where I go in the map and even if you add a bot or players you won't get any errors with other types of sounds the problem I was running into was that whenever a player was near the source of the sound I would also hear it even though I was further away so yeah that's how it's done it took me quite a while to actually figure it out lots of trial and error so I hope that by watching this tutorial, it has saved you a ton of work, really. So, yeah. Hope it was useful. Take care.